um wow i I, i'm so so happy so thrilled that i got the chance We went to get the ark, they carried it the wrong way, we saw that, um, and, and somebody lost his life because of it. But then David went and reorganized himself, read through to find what is the right way to bring this ark. Then he went for it. He must model for us that he has an exemplary relationship with God. That's the second thing that I carry from this book that I will never forget. Um, the third thing that was critical for me, and I think this was my personal lesson from the book, it was the intentionality and organization, especially of worship. How clear it was, how David went to get skilled worship leaders and went to get gatekeepers for the temple and went to get Levites. You know, there's a whole tribe in Israel that was designated to lead worship. They were not to go to do any other work but to do the work of the temple. And I think that really must inform the intention with which we go to God, you know, whether it's in our personal devotion or 
um, in, in, in our worship in general, we really, really have to have intention and organization. We cannot be haphazard about the things of God. We can't be kawaida about the things of God. We have to organize ourselves. We have to know we are coming before a king. And this king desires um, not just excellence but passion. Not just passion but organization. We have to show up with our best feet forward all the time. This book is going to inform how I lead the community that I lead, especially in worship, that we really have to push for excellence and passion. We really have to make sure that we come before God in a way that is intentionally organized, just the way these guys were organized. Yeah, And then the other thing that I see, even in that organization, is that there are people who are doorkeepers, others were gatekeepers, others cleaned the temple, others baked bread, others were singers, others were priests who came to lead the prayers. There are people who did roles behind the scenes and there are people who did roles in the spotlight. None of them were more important than the other. For this worship to run the way it was running and the temple to run the way it was running, none of these people were more important than the other. They understood everybody had to do their role for the whole entire thing to succeed. I think it pushes me to see the moments in my life when I find myself not playing the spotlight goals or the spotlight roles that I have to be keen not to jeopardize um, or, 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 you know, show up with grumpy, um, you know, to, to no. Whether I'm playing a role before people or I'm playing a role behind the scenes, this book models to me. There's somebody who woke up every single day to clean the utensils in the temple and he did it with pride. He did it with passion. There's someone whose role was to keep the gate of the temple. His entire generation was set to do that. And they did it proudly and they did it passionately. I think all of us clamor for the stage and the spotlight. But we have to realize not all of us might make our way there. But the role that God has given you, are you able to play it with an attitude that is right are you able to do it with a passion that is just like you're playing to the audience of one which is God? Colossians 3.23, do all these things as if you're doing them for God. Do it with passion because God sees you. We might not see you because you're not on the spotlight, but God sees your excellence and passion even behind the scenes, right? Um, and then the last thing that I'm going to say that I picked from this book is that there was a huge difference between how Saul exited the scene and how David exited the scene. And what made that difference? Because when Saul died, he died and then all his sons died alongside him. When David dies, he's dying, but his son has taken over the kingdom. He has pre been prepared for so well. The kingdom has been handed over to him so well. And I'm just looking at that and I'm like, hey, hey, there's a difference between how Saul exited the stage and how David exits the stage. And what made the difference is that David was really connected to God. And he listened to the heart of God. He did what God wanted. He didn't fight it. You could feel the inner struggle when God told him, you're not the one to build the temple. You can see the inner struggle by the number of times he mentions it. But at the end of the day, he obeyed God and handed over to Solomon enabled him to succeed, collected everything that he needed. Then he bowed out of the stage honorably. Saul was killed alongside his sons. I'm just asking you today, hey, what determines the legacy we leave down here is our obedience to God. May you move to the heart of God, man. May you just really, really obey the commands of God. Do what God has called you to do to the letter. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes you are not the one who's going to get the glory. But just do it and do it well. Obey God so that you can exit the stage with the honor that you need to. So I exit the stage. I hope I've done so with honor. Thank you so much for joining me through the book of First Chronicles. I hope we get to meet again through another book. Um, and may God bless you. May you guys continue to support Wakeji and to give her feedback and to love on her as she comes over to take through uh, Second Chronicles. God bless you. 
God bless you. God bless you. And bye.